Um, I thought our guys did a, a fantastic job of, of playing the way that they need to play to be successful over a long period of time. Now that it wasn't it wasn't a, a complete 40 minute game, but, but they were striving for it. And I think the way we got off to the start four assists on four baskets, one of our goals tonight was to 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 cut down on our turnovers, but more importantly, get more assists, get more baskets. And we we set a goal of anywhere from 17 or above, and we hit it. And it's amazing what happens when when uh, we pass the ball like that, and the turnovers do cut down. A couple of the turnovers were play, guys trying to make plays, like the the spot where Will threw it to Yogi, and Yogi stepped out of bounds. There's no problem with those. Some of some of the ones where um, you know we're not as aware and alert. Those those are the ones we've got to correct. But I think uh, again, you try to get anybody on your team, whether they're starting or coming off the bench, to have a play on demand mentality. And I think these guys they did that. Uh, they responded uh, from their disappointment the other night, and we treated it as a, just a short-term setback, and no one uh, harbored a lot of uh, uh, woulda, coulda, shoulda uh, over the last few days, and it was all focused on getting better. And, and I think it showed tonight. We, we had a bunch of deflections. Uh, we, were, we were guarding a good team. We made very good adjustments during the game. Kenny Johnson did a fantastic job of preparing for the game. Steve made some... Uh, great suggestion of when to switch defenses in the first half and Tim made some great uh, suggestion uh, adjustments at halftime that excuse me that we went to and I thought that was really good for us so the coaching was fantastic from the entire staff of, of the way that they were locked into the adjustments that you need to make and our players did an excellent job so uh, I don't think we can take for granted we got an 18 year old out there getting double doubles and I think that's a pretty special thing and at one point he got called for a foul because he grabbed somebody's wrist and as I mentioned to the referee if he if he got called if, if, if there was a call made every time he got grabbed going for a ball at the glass uh, he might be averaging uh, about eight more free throw attempts and about five more rebounds I mean he's just out there playing hard I mean he is a big big focus of the other team's report and yet he gets out there and he's just playing with a relentless uh, fervor, which is which is fantastic. It was great to see Evan uh, get uh, results offensively, and I, it all came because of the way he locked in defensively. Same with Stan Robinson, and uh, same with Luke Fisher. I mean, everybody's trying to uh, to get better, and our guys are learning what they're capable of. We had guys that were in. We had eight guys in this morning at ten. We had our walkthrough at two thirty. And we play the game tonight. And some of those guys that were in at 10, 2, 30 and playing the game tonight, guys like Luke and Honor and Stan uh, and Austin, did a fantastic job. So they're learning more and more what they're capable of. And um, we just want to build on it. We're playing against a team that's just won two in a row now in Oakland. Beat Ohio U tonight. Uh, have the leading three-point shooter uh, of Mason attempts coming in and Travis Bader, a you know, well-coached team. And we turn right back around and get ready for that. How much, I guess, do you see some of those, those bench guys that you mentioned just figuring out how to kind of play from that role where they, they're not starting, but they're coming in and impacting the game quickly? Well, I think, again, I, I think it's the same thing for a starter. I mean, you have to go in. I mean, we really have to, and I have to make decisions, I think, you know, very clearly going into the game. Okay, who gives us the best chance for that defensive energy, for, for being on the glass, for moving the ball? And, and, and that means the starting lineup could change from time to time. But, but bottom line is... When guys are ready and they're locked in to, to impacting the game the way that it needs to be impacted, not coming in and thinking, okay, I have to shoot, I have to score, I have to make this drive, I have to get fouled. And it's more about, okay, I've got to get a stop defensively. I've got to communicate. I've got to, I've got to call up a switch. I've got to rotate. I've got to block out. I've got to get back. I've got to run. You know, when you're focused on those things, it's amazing how much easier the game becomes. And, and what we're, what we're imploring constantly is to have that concentration and focus when you're sitting out so that when you do go in, uh, you're absolutely prepared for, for what's in front of you. Uh, you hear coaches talk about the importance of establishing an identity. Do you feel like your team's developing an identity? And if so, how would you characterize it? You know, development is a good term. But I think, I think, we've, uh, I think we're learning that, that our development's got a long way to go. I think we saw some of that the other night, I, I think, in the, in the Syracuse game. We were focused on the way we needed to attack the zone. We were focused on getting it inside. We had their forwards in foul trouble uh, in the first half. 
Uh, we get it to 33-33, and all of a sudden we shoot too many jump shots, and we and we and we turn the ball over, and then they just you know good teams snowball that, and so our identity's got to be come you know take care of the ball, take what the defense is giving us, make sure our transition defense is really good, make sure our defensive energy and rebounding energy are really high, and and that's got to be a constant in the identity. So those things are coming, but I think this team uh, can be a very good rebounding team can be a team that gets to the foul line. I think we saw what happened tonight is, is can we keep building on this where when we move the ball and, and we get rhythm threes, we're pretty good with it. You know, we're knocking them down. When we feel like we have to take one or, you know, we take one after we've hesitated or we've taken one too quick, well, we're not good enough to do that right now. So our identity's ever forming, but, but um, it'll come. Dustin? Was this the first time you've set a, a, an assist or a statistical for assist this year, I guess, and what made you decide to do that? No, that was just a whim. And, and I, I don't really get much into the assists. I really don't. I, because we're a driving team. We're trying to get to the foul line. I mean, look at the game tonight. I, I, it, it, it's hard to referee right now. It really is. I mean, there were so many um, different calls that I think if you spend too much time thinking it's going to be pretty, okay, you're, you're gonna, it's going to get ugly. All right, and when you're just playing, and you know, okay, we've got to get to the rim, we've got to post it up, we've got to get a ball reversal. But the biggest thing there was just really continuing to make the next pass, and and even even with turning the ball over, it's not coming in every day. I mean, the, the negative impact is, hey, don't turn it over. Okay, no, the positive impact is, what did you see? Make this pass. Make it simpler. Create an angle to feed the post. You know, those are the kind of things. You, you want to focus on. Well, when you're focusing on just continuing to make the next pass and you get your game in rhythm, that, then those good things happen. But it's it's the first time. I've never really set assist goals in the past. We've always had 20 that was a uh, that was a game goal. Uh, sometimes it was emphasized, sometimes it wasn't. But when you're scoring a lot of points and you've got guys that really understand the game, like in the last couple of years and knew how to move the ball, sometimes it just takes care of itself. But a year ago right now, we were averaging 17 assists, 11 turnovers. And so those are the numbers that we pay attention to where we were a year ago uh, on the production part of it. And I thought that was a real positive step. Sean? Just seeing those numbers today, does it kind of, when you see the ball moving particularly like it did in the first half for those guys, does it kind of make you think back to that team, just how good this group could be if it moves the ball that way in the future? Well, I'll be honest with you, no, because I, 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 um, every team is different. Um, I, I think that's a tough question. Um, yeah, but if I thought about that, I might have been looking in the corner for Victor or Cody to, or Jordan to pop in there. But but uh, I, I think you, you you're constantly trying to get your identity. I think when when the ball moves like it does, it's just really good looking basketball. You know, in the sense of the shot may not go, but you're getting great movement, and all of a sudden it's contagious. And, and, uh, and it's a fine line in these days, you know, especially with the team that we have, because we want to get in the post, we want to drive, you've got to get to the foul line. I mean, one of the leaders in the country in free throw shooting. And so we want to make sure that we're not giving that up. But when that ball's swinging like that, yeah, that, that's a very good thing. That, 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 that's when they, you, it looks like they're, they're getting, you know, it, it's coming to them. Terry, which how important was it to get some different guys hitting perimeter shots tonight? Well, I, we've been spending a lot of time on it. I, I just keep the, the, I, I'm very positive with that with this team as long as we're taking good shots, because I mean Iowa was what 11th in the league Let's last year. Right, what are they now? First or second? They're second. Second in the league. I mean, same guys, right? I mean, uh, a year ago, I know I keep saying this, but Victor Aladipo a year ago was shooting 26, 27, 28 percent from three, ended the year at 44. It, it, it's it's you got to work at it. I mean, you got to work at it. That's why we try to. Uh, um, get as much extra shooting as we can. We try to shoot when we're fresh. We try to shoot in the middle. We try to shoot when we're tired. You know, we try to do all those different things. Same thing with the free throws. And uh, it's it's fun to watch guys' confidence go up. But again, it's like anything else. When they come in with a attitude of impacting the game in an area defensively or with the glass or with their hustle, it's amazing what happens offensively. Can you? It seemed that you had a lot of pass fakes in the shots to create more room to get that zone moving without giving up the ball. Is that something that was an emphasis for you? They weren't in the zone very long. I, I, we, we, no, because not really. I mean, it, ball movement. Ball movement. I mean, it, uh, 
We want a shot fake on a long closeout. We want to rip it on a short closeout. I mean, and it doesn't matter if it's man or zone. Um, just attacking zones, it, 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 we mix up a lot of movement actions. We're trying to score early. We're trying to make it hard for the defense to get set and adjusted on the break. We're trying to screen the guards. There's always attack points in different parts of the zone. You know, where you're, where you're attacking, they're trying to attack their personnel. When we were doing that the other night at Syracuse, we were doing an excellent job of that. When we stopped attacking the personnel the way that we wanted to, it's not just about attacking a zone or it's a one guard front, or it's a two guard front. It's really, you still got to create matchups in it if you're going to be successful, especially when you're not killing it from three. And so to us, it's, it's uh, there's a couple constants that we want to have. We want to play out of the corners more. We want to screen the guards. We want to be able to put great pressure on the wings with driving it and with pulling them out. And we want to attack the middle either off the top from the corner and getting it kicked or with our post ups as much as possible. And if a shot fake, if a pass fake, if a dribble handoff, if something that leads to it in the flow of the game, great. But those are the areas that we want to get to. Anything else for Coach? You said it, it's hard to officiate now. Why, sure. do, why do you think it's hard? Because the rules are just different. I mean, but, but if the rules are, are the rules, how is it harder now? than? Because they haven't had, they haven't, uh, they, the season's very young. The season's still very young. I mean, it's a month old a month. And so um, I have great respect for I love the way, I, I love the changes. We just got to keep adjusting. And and I, our guys did that. You know, we had a couple. I didn't totally agree that they were fouls in the pick and roll, but they were. So we make the adjustment. And all of a sudden, we had three or four really good pick and roll coverages. And, and, and our guys figured out they want to be on the court. They're not trying to foul. And so, so when, when they make those adjustments,